Good morning, everybody. Get started here in just a minute. Okay, I've got 10 o'clock and welcome to our uh, commissioners, our staff, and to all of uh, those that have joined us this morning. We've got five items on our agenda today. We've got the county manager update, the Westport update, our sewer American Rescue Plan Act monies for Westport uh, discussion. We also have the Clatsop County Code Amendments and Strategic Facilities Plan. Um, I'll go ahead and read our script here. Work sessions are an opportunity for board members to discuss issues informally with staff and invited guests. The board encourages members of the public to attend work sessions and listen to the discussion, but there's generally no opportunity for public comment. Members of the public wishing to address the board are welcome to do so during the regularly scheduled meetings held twice monthly. And with that, we'll go ahead and turn it over to our county manager, Don Boone. Don. Thank you, Chair Quayle and members of the board. Good morning. Um, I, if, if there's no objections, I'd like to take my five minutes and actually run through just a few slides um, talking about um, housing and, uh, and, and houseless um, issues, just to give your board a sense of, um, of at least how staff sees our, our role in some of the um, upcoming um, um, outputs that the, that the board uh, will see. So um, just to, to begin, you know, that the housing issues are, they're really framed by a lot of different factors, obviously economic factors, there's legal factors, there's geography factors, um, there's legislative factors. And so, you know, when we think about housing, um, there isn't really always a real clear path. And so, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what has changed um, over the last several years. There's been changes with both uh, legal uh, opinions and legislation, which has kind of guided how cities are really addressing the houseless issue, uh, meaning that there has been court cases that have in, invalidated city ordinances that ban sleeping and camping. And then there's been legislation that has required local governments to adopt objectionably reasonable standards when they are adopting policies to actually regulate where people can live outdoors. And so um, if we could go to, to, to the next slide. Teresa, can we, I'm not sure who's controlling the slide, but. It's moved. Okay. That's it. So, um, so, um, so when we think about housing, um, there's a city role and there's a county role and they're not the same. And, you know, necessarily the cities are really in the driver's seat when it comes to a lot of the housing initiatives. And that's both affordable housing and that is also houseless programs and services. And that's not to say that the county is not involved and it doesn't mean that we can't take a leadership role but typically our, our role is, is really firmly rooted in being a convener and oftentimes being a funder. Um, but cities, as we all know, are very distinct and they are going through their own community engagement processes and they are considering a number of ordinances and local regulations that are uniquely city of Seaside or uniquely city of Astoria. Um, and so really the cities is where a lot of the roots um, are, are really in the ground over these responses to both affordable housing and with houseless. And so then what the county has to say is, okay, how do we enable support um, the efforts of the cities? And so, you know, what the county has been doing is we've been participating in, in the city housing efforts. We've been, we can facilitate city um, and county and other stakeholder meetings. Uh, we have this conduit for county surplus real, real property 
Um, and then, of course, we are the regulator in the unincorporated um, area. So, and then we have funding sources. We've allocated general fund dollars and and ARPA dollars to to support um, the safety net um, nonprofits, and that's organizations like the Warming Center, Helping Hands, CCA, the Harbor um, Lifeboat. Um, and so, what my point really here is is it takes all of us and dealing with both the affordable housing issue and the houseless issue is going to take active coordination from both cities and counties, but the cities will be leading it because they're going to come up with uniquely city solutions to these problems. One of the opportunities that, that the county has is to convene, and if we could go to the next slide, um, we have the opportunity to, to, to serve at as a convener and in May right now we are working to convene a city and county uh, elected officials meeting regarding affordable housing. Um, this will be the first meeting of, um, of the city county electeds group since the pandemic started. So it's a good time for us to get back together and really talk about what are some of the regional issues and what are some of the city specific um, policies um, and programs so that we all know what is happening and then we can figure out how we can support and and leverage each other's efforts. So that will be in May. Um, this Friday, we'll be re releasing our expression of interest for the county surplus real property. Um, we have um, around a dozen properties that are county owned that are surplus that could be uh, suitable uh, for affordable housing development, all of the parcels are, are within cities. So what the expression of interest is, is we're just putting these properties out to cities, special districts, and qualified nonprofits to see who might be interested in, in, in using any of these properties for a public purpose, which for the non for the qualified nonprofits, that would be for either affordable housing, child care, or for social services. Um, so we're going to put them out there. It'll be interesting to see what kind of a response we get. This is the first time that the county's done this. Um, it won't be the last. Um, so uh, we don't have a track record to see um, what kind of interest we are going to have, but I think that there will be interest. We're also sending. Um, the solicitation to the nonprofit housing developers, some who we've worked with and some who who we've met along the way. So that um, that will close in in mid May. So we'll have a sense in mid May about the interest for the county properties. And then the other thing is that we've the cities and the county have had discussions with Cannon Beach, who is spearheading a regional discussion about affordable housing specifically, and it's really focused on code requirements and housing financial um, incentives. Um, and it's really just to share what every city is doing and see if there isn't um, some, some collaboration and, and some co-production opportunities. And so um, it'll be a good process. I think it's it is just time for all of us to, to, to really get together and have some hard discussions about how we want to move forward. So, um, so I, in summary, what I would say um, to, to your board is we are all working together. Um, the county is actively involved in the city processes. The county is, is a, a, a voice for certain initiatives like the micro housing uh, initiatives, uh, but even that one has strong tentacles with the cities. Um, and so a lot's happening. I hope we start to see progress here um, fairly quickly, but I just wanted to present this and uh, be available to answer any questions that your board might have. Thank, Thank you, you, County Manager. I really appreciate that uh, our county staff has taken the initiative and is, is making this a priority and taking this step I was curious about what happens if we get multiple uh, proposals or if we have multiple interest. Sure, so um, Chair Quayla, if that happens, we will then start kind of a, kind of a secondary process uh, to then meet with those interested parties and with the cities 
and kind of walk through what might be the best use for these parcels and what these different um, offers bring to the table. So there'll be a secondary process if we get multiple interests for, for, for a single parcel. And then ultimately it'll be the board's decision about how that property gets, gets disposed. I mean, and so just as a what if, um, you could have two nonprofit housing developers that are interested in a specific parcel. One has a plan and, and they think they can, you know, uh, get construction started in a year and a half or two years. And then another one that says, well, it may be five years before we can get to it. And so that could be a factor in which, which offer the board might want to consider, just as one yeah. example. Yeah, thank you, County Manager. I see the Commissioner Thompson has a question. Thank you, Chair Quila. Um, I echo your praise for the work of staff. I'd also uh, point out that the city of Seaside has been very active in addressing these issues. So uh, they've been including county commissioners in their efforts. I know the city of Astoria has as well. So we've got capable and willing partners, which is wonderful. And with COVID, uh, we hope ebbing, we're now able to meet together and collaborate more effectively I'm also concerned about, um, about transient uh, or not so transient folk camping in rural Clatsop County. Um, I was at a meeting in Jewel and residents there were concerned about proliferation. So I hope as we go forward, we're also considering where, uh, where this problem may exist in the unincorporated areas of Clatsop County, even though the legitimate focus is on what's happening in the cities and how we can partner with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Thompson. Any other questions? Not seeing any, I really appreciate the effort again, uh, county manager, and we'll, um, we'll be watching this process and seeing what interest uh, this generates. Uh, ah, okay, Commissioner now Banks. I can see. I couldn't see any hands. <laughs> Commissioner, Banks. <laughs> Commissioner Banks. That's the one frustrating thing about Zoom sometimes, but anyhow, um, yeah, I just wanted to dovetail that we always, if we're going to be having a, a countywide conversation, that maybe we can invite um, entities that are working on state lands or unincorporated areas to actually give like a, an, a, a real um, a real description of what is occurring outside of our municipalities. Um, I think that that either a summary or something as we as we are moving into this conversation even further might be beneficial to all of us. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Mangs. I do remember we had a presentation from the Department of Forestry a few months ago, and they did outline a number of the illegal camping issues on public lands and um, it probably would be good to touch base with them once again. Any other uh, comments, questions? Okay, not seeing any. Uh, we'll await the next step. Thank you so much, County Manager. Next item is the Westport update um, on page three of our agenda. And our Public Works Director, Ted McLean, is here. I'll go ahead and turn it over to Ted. Thank you, uh, Chair Coyla, members of the board. I just uh, wanted to give you an update <clears throat> as to uh, our efforts in Westport. Um, we had a public meeting, as you know, on the 15th of February, um, and we met with, uh, we sent out a flyer to uh, everyone in the community, and um, we received, I think there was about 40 residents there uh, at our meeting, uh, along with uh, Commissioner Bangs and our Assistant County Manager, Monica Steele, and our engineering staff um, here at Public Works. Uh, and there were representatives there also from uh, Teven Brothers. Um, <clears throat> so we provided uh, the friends there uh, the plans to uh, put in a new route uh, outside the residential neighborhood as they had requested 
and prior meetings that we had with them. And so when we provided this update, we um, answered a lot of questions and seen the reaction uh, to the local residences there as to the new route. We provided them, uh, uh, they provided a lot of questions and we put all of those questions together and put them on the uh, county website. So our managers, uh, county managers, staff, um, had a communication plan that was good. We, we had a card that we gave them and they could answer these questions and then they could provide their concerns about the project as well. So all of that uh, went on the website uh, along with uh, the uh, uh, frequently asked questions uh, sheet that was on there as well. And so you can look back and, and there were uh, many ways to communicate this. One was right there at the meeting, uh, or you could take the card back with you and you could send it in, or you can get on the county website and give your uh, updates to the questionnaire and your concerns about this project. Uh, so you can see looking through uh, the questions that were asked, there were 46 uh, responses uh, to uh, these questions. Uh, do you support the new road? And uh, 40 residences replied yes, and six uh, residents have reported no. Um, and <clears throat> then do you support the improvements of the existing roads uh, if we didn't have this new route? And again, it was uh, about 35 residences replied no, uh, and four reported yes, and and eight didn't uh, answer that question. Uh, so uh, most of the residences there, as you can see, uh, would like to see this new route. Um, in their uh, uh, written statements concerning their greatest concerns, you can look through there and see that the safety and livability of the community was their greatest concern. And um, so the supportive of uh, the new route. I don't think they were very happy about how long it's going to take us to get it done. Um, but uh, we gave them the, the long answer and hopefully we can shorten that up if this is approved to go through. Um, and then there were some questions asked uh, that we didn't have the answers to. And we put those at the time, we didn't have the answers. We put those on the frequently asked questions. So one of those was concerning the railroad. Um, and just going back, we did get approval from ODOT for our access uh, for this new route. And we met with ODOT Rail and uh, then also um, Portland Western and uh, got their approval of this new access and rail crossing but again, we would have to close the Westport Ferry. They had uh, uh, contingencies there with if you close one crossing or if you open a new crossing, you have to close two. And they gave us some grace there because there's only two roads into Westport. So, uh, and we don't have jurisdiction over other private rail crossings. So that was a question that came up, why can't you close this other crossing, well, we don't have that authority uh, to do that. And so that uh, question was answered. And then another question was, would it be possible to get a crosswalk from Old Milltown Road over to uh, the gas station and store that's over there? And so we met with ODOT and they're supportive of the crossing. Uh, so we'll just work with them to see what that would look like. Uh, as we go through this process. And then uh, uh, finally, we, we are going to get access to uh, the property uh, that we're trying to uh, acquire. Uh, we should get access by the 25th of this month uh, to do the rest of our engineering work um, and our wetland work on that property. Uh, are there any questions? Thank you, Ted. This uh, report really outlines pretty extensive outreach into the community and I uh, really appreciate you listening and 
compiling all of this, um, this is a this is a good representation of how we want to do things and, and making sure that we're working with the communities and listening to them. Commissioner Bangs. I have to agree. This is a good representation of, of the level of communication that I feel like the county should have with all of our constituents. Um, I'm really impressed with our public works department in, in listening and answering and transparency in this project. Um, just out of curiosity, and I don't know if uh, Ted can answer this question. I'm hoping somebody else from the county might be able to answer it. How many um, actual residents do we have in this area? I wanted to kind of gauge how much of a response that we've had in this survey um, like what percentage of folks have responded in the survey to kind of see if this is a, a true um, like polling of, of the public opinion down there. Yeah, I can't answer that question. Uh, Terry might be able to uh, because he was helping with the mailers. Um, I know most of the people that <clears throat> responded live on that side of the highway um, and, the, and the residences that were there at our meeting were mainly the ones on that side, um, the Westport Ferry and Old Mill Town Road. We've, we've sent out approximately 250 to 275 mailers. I uh, had about 40 of them returned and uh, there's a lot of empty trailers right now in the trailer park. So. Um, it was pretty typical that we, where we have found, um, you get maybe 10%, 15% of the people that'll show up at a meeting when you have this kind of contact. Well, you know, 40, I think it's 48. That's almost, you know, 20%. That's actually a pretty good turnaround in my opinion for a survey. And I had forgotten about the mailers even. So I, I would have to say that, you know, as a, as a County entity, we've done a fairly good job with, with reaching out and trying to get um, response or public public opinion received. So thank you very much for all of your hard work, Ted and Terry. I appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner Bangs. Any other questions, comments? Terry. I have one, cause just because Ted and I were out there the other day, the uh, new park and boat ramp was overflowing yesterday. So we're getting that kind of participation out there. Um, they're, they're enjoying the new park. That's great news. That's good to hear, <laughs> Commissioner Banks. I wanted to piggyback on that. Actually, um, just our local constituents out in Napa have adventured down to Westport to check it out and have had great, I've had great reviews regarding that park and just how impressed people are. There's a little bit of confusion, I think, with the, with the um, set up being that we are, you know, looking to cater to all types of public uh, folks and, and with our special setup with the, oh goodness, I can't remember what it was called. The paddle, is it paddle boarding? I don't know. But anyhow, uh, everybody is just very excited about it. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Commissioner Mays. Very satisfying to see it getting that use. Any other comments, questions? All right, thank you, Ted. Well done. We'll move on to the next item, which is the Westport Sewer American Rescue Plan Act monies. Our county engineer, Dean Karanen is with us. I'll turn it over to Dean. Good morning, uh, Chair Quayla and commissioners. Um, the uh, Westport Sewer District was um, tentatively allocated 300,000 for uh, ARPA monies. And as of, we had some different ideas of what we would probably use that for, but as of last summer, the beginning of last summer, we were having some issues uh, meeting permit limits at the plant. And through some investigations, we noticed that our pods were, were had a sludge buildup in them, which isn't something that should have been happening. So a little deeper and dive into it, we noticed that there was sludge buildup in most of the tanks um, at the plant. And obviously that would need to be caused by I would believe that the septic tanks are too full, so the solids are getting into the system and therefore getting into the plant. Um, so part of this money, um, we'd like to you know, clean the plant out, clean the pods out. We'd started cleaning the pods 
with some of our employees, but it's very labor intensive. Um, it takes about 12 hours to clean a pod. Um, and then also with that, we'd like to, uh, we have a lot of past due septics. They haven't all been checked. A lot of them haven't been pumped for a long time. So the goal would be to go through and inspect those and then pump the ones that haven't been pumped for quite a while. And then in line with that, we had uh, our engineer, Civil West, had been, we'd been talking with DEQ all last summer about, you know, possible solutions because our UVs can't keep up with when the solids are in the plant, the, the clarity of the water isn't good enough for our UVs to work properly. So Civil West had had an idea that that's a newer idea of um, injecting parasitic acid into as part of the treatment. So it works with UVs and it's a pretty successful treatment. We talked with DEQ and they thought this is something that we can actually implement at the plant. And then the final um, item was to add a uh, sewer line TV inspections. When we were working on the facilities plan, in order to stay within our $40,000 budget that we had proposed, the uh, Civil West had said, well, let's either do smoke testing, you know, or TV. And we thought, you know, maybe the city of Astoria could help us with TV, but it's, it's quite a task out there. And so that would be the, the last items requesting money for that. Thank you, Dean. That is, that's parasitic acid, not parasite, like uh, yes. <laughs> it's spelled differently. Yeah. And, and which that, that acid is, it's uh, basically acetic acid and hydrogen peroxide together. And acetic acid is what is in vinegar. So when that dissolves, it is actually um, biodegradable and isn't, isn't harmful to fish like chlorine would be. Yeah, interesting. Any questions for our county en engineer on this? Mr. Not seeing Chair. any. Mr. So Chair. this would. Uh, Mr. Chair. Oh, sorry. Thank yep. you. There you well, are. I just want to say that I am so happy to see Westport getting attention. I know there was some consternation among my colleagues. You know, how come we're giving um, county support to Arch Cape? What about Westport? I, we're all committed to covering every part of Clatsop County, particularly Westport. Delighted to see uh, sewer work there. It's, a bit, it's been a problem for a long time. Delighted to see a more, um, dare I call it, organic solution to this problem. So uh, good for you and whatever we can do to help, we want to. Thank you. Well said, Commissioner Thompson. Commissioner Banks. And this is just a question for the group or whomever has the answer. Um, I think I'm on the right track, but isn't Westport Sewer District the only um, small district that Clossop County is responsible for as a county entity uh, amongst all of our water and sewer districts? Yes, that's the case. Any other Comments, questions? And so as it's proposed, 170,000 would uh, be proposed for the current uh, fiscal year. And then 130,000 would be proposed uh, for the following fiscal year, broken up into the two years. Okay. Um, okay. Not seeing any more questions or comments. Thank you very much, County Engineer. and. Uh, appreciate your, your work on this and looking for creative solutions. Next item is the Clatsop County Code Amendments, Code Compliance Procedures, and Noise Control Standards. I'll turn it over to uh, Gail Henriksen, our Community Development Director. Thank you, Commissioners, and good morning. Uh, back in 2012, almost 10 years ago, the county adopted Ordinance 12-06, which combined and consolidated all of our county ordinances into one code, which is the Class of County Code. And uh, it, the county code deals mainly with issues of public behavior. So things like um, noise complaints, uh, 
parking, public events, special events. And part of that includes our code compliance section. And specifically within the Clatsop County Code, there are five sections that are currently tied to code compliance and our process here in community development. Uh, it includes uh, Chapter 1.11, which covers code violations, Chapter 1.12, which is the code compliance process itself, Chapter 8.04, which is nuisance abatement, Chapter 8.12, which is noise control standards, and then Chapter 8.20, which is our new outdoor lighting ordinance that was adopted a couple of years ago. So co-compliance staff has been working with county council and with the sheriff's office to review and make some revisions uh, to these different chapters in our county code. One of the proposals that uh, is before you in draft form today is to revise uh, chapter 1.11 and 1.12 and 8.04 to transfer enforcement of our noise standards from code compliance back to the sheriff's office. And uh, what I understand is that historically that was the case. And then when we did our amendments in 2012, that somehow got transferred over to code compliance. And we would like to give it back very gracefully and graciously to the sheriff's office. And it, it makes more sense simply because uh, code compliance staff does not work evenings and weekends when our and holidays when our uh, quiet times are in effect and uh, we don't foresee hiring staff to cover those periods of time uh, so this would just make it easier the sheriff's office would then have the ability to issue a citation and that would make their life i think a little bit easier as well because they are responding now um, and the sheriff is here and he can talk about that more the other changes that we're proposing is relate to the hearings procedure primarily and the way our code is written right now only a person who has been cited for a violation can ask for a hearing before the code compliant or the hearings officer and it's created an issue because as staff we are, we are not able to record liens against properties we have to have a hearings officer's decision but the way our code is written we can't request that hearing ourselves and what we found is that we have probably 20 to 30 properties throughout the county that are just I will call them chronic uh, nuisance properties that have been in code violation for years, if not decades, uh, may have other legal issues going on with them associated with law enforcement. And we have no way to be able to record that code compliance uh, order and put a lien on the property unless the violator themselves says, I want to go to a hearing. And that usually doesn't happen. Uh, so we just have these properties that are stuck in limbo. And so we worked with county council on this. We used uh, Deschutes County as uh, sort of our model that we worked off of and their process that they use and put together a new section 1.14 that deals specifically with hearings and how that process would work and would give staff the ability to uh, request a hearings officer hearing if, if it was determined that uh, we needed to go down that route. Uh, the remainder of the changes really are more to clean up code citations, bring uh, bring in the latest ORS citations and to update some terminology. And uh, we would like to, based on your direction, bring this back to you in ordinance form uh, to public hearings that would happen at a later date. And in the meantime, I am here, uh, Sheriff Phillips is here and County Council is here as well to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Uh, Sheriff Phillips, did you wanna add anything? Uh, I, I think that uh, Gail did an outstanding uh, report. And I really can't add anything to that, um, but it will make enforcement much easier uh, now that we could cite um, and use uh, statute instead of uh, through the lengthy process of referring it back to the code department. Thank you, Sheriff. County Council, did you want to add anything at this time? Uh, sure. Uh, so Joanna Lyons, Antley County Council. Um, just wanted to echo the thoughts um, uh, as, as spoken by Director, Director Henriksen that in fact it would be very helpful and useful uh, that these issues can be taken to the hearings officer. State law prohibits us from putting a lien on a property um unless it goes in front of a uh, hearings officer so this would give us an additional enforcement mechanism uh, this won't solve every problem um, so um, just be prepared i think perhaps in future 
um, uh, work sessions, we'll be talking about some other tools um, that code would like to um, introduce, but um, this certainly would um, um, uh, close this gap. So thank you. Thank you, County Council. Commissioner Thompson. Thank you, sir. Well, I'm delighted to see that we are closing gaps. Uh, we were asked a while ago to put teeth into something so that there could be effective enforcement. I think this goes a long way. I'm delighted to see it. I had a question on page 50 of our board packet. Um, we're talking about noise control standards 8.12.010B4. A person discharging a firearm on a public or private shooting range, shooting gallery, or other area designed and built for the purpose of target shooting. Um, I've had occasion to hear concerns raised by community members. They had uh, next door neighbors who were visiting from out of town and discharging uh, semi-automatic and automatic weapons fire all day long. We let folks make noise from early in the morning until late at night. And um, this community member was concerned and really frightened about making a complaint being next door to somebody who was comfortable discharging semi-automatic weapons hour after hour, day after day. Tell me, will, will this help me understand what's a private shooting range, what's a shooting gallery, what's another area designed and built for the purpose of target shooting? Are neighbors protected from noise and stray bullets? And how do we... How do we deal with this? I'd like there to be some kind of effective enforcement when uh, neighbors may be concerned about their own safety in making reports. Uh, sure, uh, I'll, I'll take that one. So safety, yes. Uh, anytime someone's shooting on, on private property or even if it's at a range, there has to be a safe backstop. As far as the noise goes, uh, we, we can't enforce that. Uh, Several years ago, we cited uh, someone for shooting a cannon at all hours of the day and night. And uh, we went to court and it was determined that that section of our noise ordinance was unconstitutional. Basically, as long as you live in the unincorporated area of the county um, and you're shooting on your property, and yes, it makes a lot of noise, but you can still do that. So uh, the courts kind of handled that one for us. Well, then follow up question is this is this something because I know folks love their weapons and they love to fire their weapons they get joy and satisfaction from it so I'm not trying to pry anything out of anybody's hand. What I am looking to do is see if we can define neighborhood livability is that a revision to state statute that we should um, ask our our uh, pack West to look into how do we how do we maintain livability for everybody and have reasonable and civil discourse and reasonable and um, enforceable standards on what constitutes neighborhood livability as far as noise goes in, in the discharge of weapons. I, I'm gonna defer the legal question to our county council. <laughs> I have, uh, um, Commissioner Thompson, Chair and Commissioner Thompson. Um, I have to do some research because I'm not aware of what um, the restrictions are um, in the unincorporated areas. And I think that's the only area that we regulate, um, of course, is the unincorporated areas. Um, so I'd have to do some research, but I will get back with you. Thank you, County Council. We don't need a separate canon or ordinance. Commissioner Webb. Thank you, Chair Quayla. Um, yes, actually, uh, County Council, um, I would be very interested in kind of the broad uh, regulations involving um, the shooting of firearms uh, in, in unincorporated areas. Uh, how big a lot does it have to be on? I know in some jurisdictions there is some issue about you have to have a minimum of 50 acres or 10 acres or whatever. Uh, I'd love to know it, it, is that something that would be in county code or is that something that, that is state controlled? Um, um, Commissioner Webb and, and commissioners, yes, it is going to be under state law. It's not going to be a county code issue. 
Um, these issues are generally um, uh, something that the state regulates. Um, there may be opportunity for the for the county to regulate it, um, but I will have to do more research and I will okay. um, report back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Banks. So just just to to throw some caution out there, uh, I am a little unwilling to travel down this rabbit hole just because in regards to un unincorporated clots of county, that also takes into account all of our private and state timberlands and hunting season. And I really hesitate, actually I'm unwilling to travel down the ordinance route in regards to unincorporated county firearm use and private property. Um, I feel like adding layers of additional ordinance and controls to what somebody does on their private property in unincorporated clots of county within the realm of making sure that they are maintaining safety. And I feel like if anybody is concerned about their safety, they should call the sheriff's department and voice their concerns and then have you know, a proper response from our law enforcement um, in regards to where we stand on state law and, and what we are able to control on private lands. Um, and then just to squirrel off a little bit, um, I had a question, why did we choose Deschutes County? And I'm sure um, Sheriff Phillips probably has a close relationship with that department there. Um, I was just curious uh, why we chose Deschutes County for our model for this, for this, uh, this new way of doing things. I mean, I'm assuming they're very successful. So I like following successful plans. So I just was curious. I, I could offer uh, briefly that the uh, noise ordinance is not modeled off of Deschutes County. And I'll let Gail talk about the process it is. Yeah, the changes to the noise ordinance were fairly simple and uh, the sheriff and Paul Williams uh, helped uh, put those together. Uh, I personally chose to shoot because of, of the 36 counties, I find that they are often the most ahead in front of the curve, that they tend to think about things. Their processes are well, well established. Um, and I usually look to them as my first example. Uh, if you have another county that you would prefer, we can go back and research theirs and uh, make amendments to the process if that was, is what the board would like. Uh, Commissioner Mangi, a follow up, and then I see Commissioner Webb has her hand up. Yeah, it was just a quick follow up. I wasn't talking about the noise ordinance. Um, just to clarify, I was talking about our original agenda item. So, and I, and I appreciate the clarity. Thank you, thank you, Sheriff and and Director Henriksen. I appreciate it. Um, I just I'm glad that you've chosen to, the shoots for its reasons, and you know I have no complaint. I was just curious. Thank you, Commissioner Webb. Yeah, I um, my suggestion about um, about becoming more informed about our firearms regulations uh, was not an effort to to create an ordinance here in Clatsop County. This is just one of the questions that I am occasionally asked by my constituents, and I'd like to be better informed um, about what the existing laws are. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Webb. Uh, Commissioner, I, I see our county manager has something. Commissioner Thompson, did you have your hand up earlier? No, okay, Commissioner, okay, county manager. Uh, Chair Quayle, the members of the board, I certainly don't wanna add any complexity um, to this issue, but I think that there are certain unique parts of the state that have what is called restricted shooting districts. Um, and one of those is in Washington County, and that's why I'm familiar with it, which is really the, it is within the urbanized unincorporated, urban unincorporated area. Um, and that was because as it was incorporated, and it was incorporated densely, and this was a transition from a more rural area to a much more urban area, it was decided um, to create a restricted shooting district. But those are usually limited geographically, and it's a very specific um, uh, tool, um, and it's usually for very um, urban areas. So that's just that's just one mechanism. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, County Manager. 
Any other comments, questions on this item? Okay, so uh, Gail will we'll be bringing this back then at a, uh, a future meeting. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll move on to our next item, which is the strategic facilities plan on page 52. We have 30 minutes set aside for this. Um, and I'll turn it over to uh, David Diefenbach, our uh, capital projects manager. David. Good morning, commissioners. Um, hope you can hear me. Um, this is an update on the plan that we've been working on. We hired um, Sarah Architects several months ago, um, and they came on site in, I think, December and met with all the staff, all the departments. Um, and then they came back a later time and we went to all the departments, you know, reviewed all the spaces, you know, to see what they look like. They took that data back, reviewed it, and then they, um, had another uh, virtual meeting with all the departments to say, okay, here's what we understood, um, we found, and then they um, went back and have been analyzing that data to determine, you know, short term, what do we need, um, what our needs are now, what what they should be, and then you know, a couple of different um, timelines in the future to determine, you know, what we're going to need to plan on. And the Sarah Architect team, Chris and um, Becky are, should be on this call and um, they will do the presentation and any questions, just go ahead and ask them. Thank you. Thank you, David. We'll turn it over to uh, Chris and Becky. Thank you. Commissioners, it's really great to be here. So building on Dave's introduction, um, this is the second of three meetings that we're planning on having with you. Um, at our first meeting, we heard your considerations about your physical space. And today, as, as Dave said, we're sharing our analysis of what we heard from staff and, and what we observed on our site visits. And today's information is really preparing us for our meeting next month, where we're gonna talk about some recommendations uh, uh, building on what we hear today and what we've learned on uh, about your space needs. So uh, Ashley and Patrick from my office are here as well to answer detailed questions. They have been working directly uh, with your staff. And then um, Chris, I'll turn it over to Chris and he's gonna walk us through the information. Thanks. Okay, can everybody see. hear me and see my screen? Yep, we can. Great, wonderful. So we're here to give you an update today uh, on the strategic facility plan. Uh, so we're going to try to recap what we've done to date, as David mentioned, um, take a little bit of a dive into the property condition assessment side of things, and then probably a little deeper dive into the space needs side of things. Um, the idea here, uh, we've been working with uh, our uh, stakeholder group, which includes uh, John Boone, Monica, uh, and David, uh, and then our team will sit here. Um, so big picture, uh, I think we're not telling you anything that you don't know. You are a county in growth. Um, you, the last 10 years, you have exceeded projected growth. Um, it's almost four times uh, certain uh, census um, uh, recommendations, uh, projections on growth. Uh, likely, a lot of it was due to in-migration, uh, influenced by the pandemic, um, which we hope is a once-in-a-generational kind of thing. Um, and we also saw that that growth is not evenly spread across the county. Uh, certain areas of the county um, uh, saw some constriction, um, while other areas, um, you know, we saw explosive growth. Um, uh, we do expect that that growth will continue to influence your needs, space needs and services over the next 20 years. Um, we don't see that changing. Um, so uh, the other thing that we wanted to go through today is um, just focus in on our priorities strategically. And what we've heard today from yourselves and from the staff is um, to focus on uh, addressing the immediate space constraints some of the functional inadequacies that are going on within your existing facilities, um, provide more restrooms. Um, we hear that all the time from your staff. Um, <laughs> one of those basic things. Uh, also make sure that we account for our South County presence um, for various services in order to reduce time uh, of travel and the expected growth uh, in the county. 
Uh, we're also looking at uh, encouraging shared spaces uh, in the solutions uh, that we're proposing, right? Um, a lot of uh, your space resources can be shared by various departments uh, to make things more efficient uh, in the future. And uh, also have a focus on creative re creatively reusing your existing facilities, right? Um, we love to make use with what you have rather than make you um, encourage you to build new. Right. Uh, we also, one of the other priorities is to make sure that uh, we are seeking solutions that are outside the uh, tsunami inundation zone. Um, and obviously cost will always be a driving factor in the solutions that we're providing. Um, so that's what we had set up from a priority perspective. And I guess we'd like to hear from you. Uh, is there anything that we're missing that you'd like to be a priority um, that I haven't listed here? And are all these priorities of equal weight? Um, so I'll take a minute to open the floor. Commissioner Thompson. Yeah, Thank Commissioner you. Thompson, go ahead. Uh, I don't know if I'm anomalous, but um, if you can see the background behind me, I'm sitting in the commissioner's office because now we have one. So, um, so should we be looking at the commissioner's needs for space so we could meet with constituents, um, things like that? And, and maybe we're just part of administration. I, I wasn't clear on that. I didn't see us called out and I was curious. Um, we do have included in the space needs assessment, uh, additional space for the commissioners to be able to have private space within the county offices um, to be able to get things done. And we're also encouraging a significant increase in the amount of shared meeting spaces so that if you have the opportunity to want to meet with the public or with staff, there is a place that you could do that. Um, that's one of those shared resources that we are recommending. So yes, the idea of having one eight foot by 10 foot space in the entire county for the commissioners is probably a little undersized. <laughs> That, that's okay, but uh, it's, a good, it's a good trend. I do wanna say I'm delighted that you're getting us out of the tsunami zone whenever possible. I'm delighted that you're shifting the dispersion of um, county services to be more reflective of the diversity in the county. Given our road system, the more you can spread us out and the less people have to be on the highway, the better everybody is. So, so far the trends are good, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Thompson. Any other questions, comments at this juncture? Commissioner Webb? Yeah, um, I would, um, I'm sorry, I was distracted out my window um, because of the passing of one of the Princess cruise ships. <laughs> just, that just made me get out my binoculars and look. Um, uh, I'd, I'd like to second Commissioner Thompson's comments. Um, it, it is, I realize it, and I'm pleased that she and I are the two commissioners who are most distance from, distant from each other. And yet both of us often feel the need to have space at the county, um, especially where we can meet with people. And uh, sometimes where we can do our office related functions apart from in our homes. Uh, and I'd like to second her her suggestions um, about this difficult highway system that we have here. You know, I'm sure that you at Sierra have noticed the fact that our 80% of forest land means that our development is in an L shape uh, along the river and along, <laughs> and along the ocean and dominated by three state highways. Uh, so um, I, I think that's a consideration that needs to be probably maintained throughout the whole process. So thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Webb. Commissioner Toyoka. Thank you. Just had a question on, you know, we talk about coordinated efforts and uh, shared spaces. Does it extend not only to the county, but to our cities? Can, you know, I think there's some utility, especially in shared spaces when it comes for communication, uh, facilities, there's a lot of ways that I think the county and the cities can benefit from those shared space, especially when you're talking about emergency services. Has that, is that factored in in this uh, documents? Yeah, we have taken into account the 
some there are some spaces that you're already sharing with other entities, um, and we are encouraging that shared resource, um, particularly when it comes to emergency services. Um, we are focusing in this study in those spaces that are controlled or operated by the county only. Um, this particular strategic plan does not focus on um, any further development outside the county spaces. If, if I can just um, add in for Commissioner Toyoka and the rest of the commissioners. Um, so uh, as Chris mentioned, at this point in time, what we're looking is what are the space needs that the county has? And then based on this information to Commissioner Thompson's point earlier, um, we are looking at um, what are the options in regards to um, South County presence and being able to utilize shared spaces. So once we kind of know what the overall assessment is, um, then we would begin trying to determine how we're going to um, meet the needs of what we found through this process. I guess my overall question would be, you know, if we are in this process, are the cities in a similar process or is, are we asking the same questions? So if, let's say by chance, Gearheart was in a, you know, in a phase where they were developing something, it'd be, you know, opportunistic to have that coordination as we all develop our plans. And, and those are conversations that, that we plan to have, um, but they are not a part of our um, space feasibility study. Thank you, Monica. I see Commissioner Webb, do you have a question? Yes, um, is, th is this uh, project including the relocation of our uh, public works facility out of the flood and tsunami zones? Yes, we have reviewed the previous work that was done on recommendations, and we will be weighing in on those as well. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments? One of the things we get asked a lot is, uh, whether or not we're considering housing or shelters or other types of you know, pressing needs right now uh, when we're doing this process. Um, these are only for the county's office needs for, for your specific needs. This is not taking into account constituents needs for housing in the scope of work. Thank you. Commissioner Webb, did you still have a question or? No, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I believe Don has a comment and I don't know if it's because you can't see him, Chair Quila. Yeah, I can't, sorry. Don? Uh, it's not bad to be unseen, Chair, so thank you. Um, so what, what I would just add is that, I um, mean, you know, right now at the phase we are in, it's, it's really just providing the context for the county space needs. We know that there may be County facilities, there may be um, county facilities that could be repurposed, but um, first we need to identify what our needs are and then evaluate whether or not those facilities would be appropriate for, for the county's use or not. And then if not, then for, for what purpose might they be used? And so, so we will definitely get there. I also want to just briefly comment on uh, Commissioner uh, Toyoka's question is that is that as we work through this, we will be partnering and having co uh, conversations with our city partners about uh, whether there's shared space opportunities. Um, again, first we will have to define what our space needs are and then, and then we will in engage in those um, opportunities. Uh, because if we're gonna relocate services to South County, there may be partnerships that would allow that to be a feasible a more feasible process. Um, so, and I just wanted to comment real quickly about the public works facility is that, you know, staff is still looking at what various options are, um, you know, and so that's an ongoing matter and certainly it will be informed by this study. So thank you. Thank you, County Manager, appreciate that. Okay, Chris, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to you. Okay. Um, so that's great. So it sounds like our priorities are aligned. So we're gonna take a step 
um, forward and talk a little bit about the facility assessments that were done on the physical facilities to date, as David mentioned. Um, we've gone through 13 of your existing facilities and conducted um, visual inspections. These are not full-blown detailed property condition assessments, but they are looking at the overall exterior condition of your buildings along with uh, visual inspections of the overall systems. Um, we've uh, quantified those with scores ranging from one to five, five being in fabulous condition, one being in need of lots of help um, for lack of a more technical term. And as you can see, um, your condition, the condition of your existing facilities is actually in very, very good shape compared to other counties. Your buildings have been incredibly well maintained. Um, it's not often that we see buildings that are of the age and ilk of a lot of your buildings in as good a condition as they currently are. So kudos to your building and grounds and maintenance departments for taking care of those facilities so well. There are a couple of outliers. Um, most of them are buildings where the county is not responsible for maintaining the buildings. Things like the film museum, the old jail, um, 609 Bond Street garage space that you're leasing. Um, you can see those outliers. Um, the animal shelter building is also an outlier. Um, we know in talking with your staff that that has some planned maintenance that will certainly increase um, that building. But overall, your buildings are in very good condition. The second part of what we've done as the foundation of our work is looking at space needs assessments. So as David mentioned, we um, conducted interviews. Um, we asked each of your departments to fill in surveys. We've used as benchmarks industry standards along with county population growth factors and growth projections of similar counties um, to yours. And in our overall findings, we have found, and in these initial findings, that your current facilities are significantly undersized for your immediate needs. Um, of the existing 63,000 square feet that we've been looking at in detail, um, we'd immediately recommend the need for nearly 90,000 or nearly 100,000 square feet, almost a 50% increase in space needs. Um, the largest department need is the public health department. Um, they are grossly undersized for their current staff uh, and uh, space needs. Um, there's also a significant um, shortage of what we call support space. Um, these are the complaints that you hear all the time about a lack of restrooms in your facilities, storage, meeting rooms. Um, I don't think there's anything um, uh, new that you're hearing about that, but that is the overall uh, need. Um, so uh, from a, a more specific numbers perspective, you can see here we've taken a look at each one of the various departments. We've broke them into just three big chunks, what we call core county services. These are predominantly the services um, that are conducted out of the 800 and 820 exchange buildings. Then there's public health that we separated out and uh, what we're calling sheriff, which is animal control corrections and uh, admin enforcement. So you can see here that existing column is the existing space that you have. What we're um, labeling as current is a kind of baseline from our perspective of if we were looking at it just purely from what your needs are today, this is what the need is today. And then we've looked out at three different markers, uh, short-term, mid-term, and long-term growth projections. And you'll actually see that those projections aren't significant increases. When we take into, a, into account um, the way people we expect to be working in the future is a little more flexible, a little more fluid. You're seeing less of those larger offices and workstations and more shared space. We don't expect a significant increase 20 years out. Most of that increased growth is tied more to the need to expand your services as your county's population grows. There's going to be a certain amount of growth in various departments that you're going to see. But the big jump is going from what the space you have now versus the space that you uh, could really use immediately. That's the big growth. And you can see here on the next chart visually, I'm a little bit more of a visual learner, you can see it here. 
Um, so this is the existing space that you have. Um, when we put that into what your current space needs are, you see some significant uh, growths in the public health department is this orange band, that's the biggest, um, uh, but in all the way across the board, significant growth. But then as you see that need go out five years, 10 years, 20 years, it's a relatively shallow increase in space needs. So uh, again, uh, that immediate significant increase in growth is probably the single most significant thing we saw in our initial findings. Um, that uh, shortage of support spaces like restrooms and storage and meeting spaces is probably, when you look at all the different departments across the board, that's the, the lacking space right now. Um, and understand that these proposed space uh, needs uh, take into account what were referred to as an ideal scenario with efficient layouts and circulation. Obviously, when you're working with existing buildings uh, where there's existing structure, that sometimes um, influences how much uh, functional space you can really get out of the buildings that you have. But we have to start with you know, some baseline. So that's where we start. Okay. Um, so uh, additional refinement as we go through this process, we'll be working more and more with the different departments. Um, I can tell you that even since we've uh, sent this packet to you um, and we've had additional set of meetings with the different departments, we've actually seen uh, some efficiencies grow out of the initial findings. And so we're seeing that the overall county needs long term is going to be reduced by 6,000 square feet lower than what we have indicated here. Um, so you'll see that come down a little bit and things will continue to shift and flux as we finalize some of our findings. But um, the county and the different departments have been really great uh, with working with us throughout this process. So our next steps, um, I guess before I go on to the next steps, are there any questions about the uh, space needs? Any questions? I'm not seeing any, but that's not saying much. Um, Commissioner Thompson. Well, thank you, because you know I just couldn't stand it. So projections are always an inexact science, as, as you said. You've you've done your best. Oh look, they're changing already. Well, when we look at what I consider ecologically sustainable economic development, and I look at program trends. Right now, we've been in a pandemic. So will we need more information technology, for example, because we say we want to have a broadband economy and the county has some kind of role in that. I mean, these are impossible to predict with real accuracy in terms of flexibility for various scenarios. Are you contemplating um, alternative outcomes that'll help us adjust or do we just come back and recalculate, recalibrate in the future? Um, we are always encouraging in our solutions as much flexibility as possible because just as you had said, there, there's no good way to predict, um, you know, to, to be sure about your prediction about growth. There are some obvious trends that we're seeing, um, that we have seen over the last decade and we you know, expect to see more of. Um, county services related to public health have grown at a much faster rate click than most of the other services related to a county. And your county is not alone in that. Um, you also mentioned uh, information technology is one that is certainly growing. Um, but uh, we also see certain things shrinking. There are some departments where with the pandemic, we're seeing a lot of people being able to be able to do things in a more flexible manner. You don't have to have the same office and workstation all the time. Um, we call it hoteling where people can sit in a desk that's not specifically dedicated to them one day and go to a different facility and have that same kind of condition in the future. And these projections do take into account those kinds of uh, expectations of future services. Um, does that answer your question? 
Thank you, Chris. Uh, Commissioner Webb. Yeah, I, I have a couple of questions. Um, in the uh, on page sixty five of our of our packet, um, this is a wonderful wonderful matrix here. Um, the the corrections line, I guess um, I'm I have a question about um, because we have you know we're in the process of opening a brand new jail, and um, yet we are seeing an increase in need of wow a pretty substantial amount. Uh, and I'm wondering how that is factored and whether you're taking a look uh, specifically in mind of the sheriff's facilities in general, they're sitting on, on a couple of really nice big pieces of, of land. Uh, and so how, you know, what are you all thinking in terms of expansion possibilities uh, for their location? Your mom? Um, I can. Oh, Matt, there. Like... <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Webb. I think that, that is speaking to the community corrections or parole and probation division that's uh, housed here at our facility in Warrenton, and not the jail. So that that term might be a little bit misleading. And uh, what what it speaks to is we have seven probation officers. We're hoping to add add one more. We do not have office space for them, and we do not have office space for the um, counselor that we just contracted with CBH to provide treatment here. So we're, we're a bit tight in that one specific division. Okay, no, I, I understand that. It's just that, that to me, you're on such a great piece of property out by the jail, the new jail. <laughs> um, and, um, and I guess my, my other question is that, you know, as we vacate, I think that, that one of the questions that I get asked most is, well, what's the county going to do with the old jail? <laughs> and uh, so is, is, is it part of this effort to talk about uh, properties that we are perhaps not using at the moment uh, and facilities as well? So absolutely. Um, this step in the process is to kind of lay the foundation of what your needs are um, and what your existing facilities condition is so that we can identify where the likely places are to, if we can expand in the existing facilities, where would that want to be? Um, and certainly the existing jail plays a big part in those future efforts. And we're hoping in the next steps, to come back to you and share some strategic plan options um, that would include those very you know, answers to those very same questions. Okay, thank you. The, the my other question relates to the the properties. You know, we have just sort of put out uh, uh, offers on existing property that the county owns. Are you all considering those sites as well? Uh -huh. Hey, um, Commissioner Webb, uh, members of the board, um, the sites that we have that we're releasing as part of the the uh, expression of interest are not sites that would be con can considered for for future county growth. Um, you know, we do have property that the county retains out in the North Coast Business Park um, area, and then depending upon what the satellite strategy is, you know, there may be other other space um, property needs. And so we will always look at our inventory of surplus property and we always look at it first for, is there a county need for it? Um, and if it's not, then that's why it gets released um, to the public. Um, so we will continually do that um, as we go through, um, through this process. But we did retain property out at North Coast Business Park for the possibility that there would be eventual growth needs in that area. Thank you, Commissioner Webb. Thank you, County Manager. Any additional questions? Okay, Chris. The last uh, piece, our next steps. Um, we're hoping to come back to you next month to start to share those strategic plan options uh, that I just referenced. Um, and then uh, with uh, your input, um, we are hoping to then finalize those options and a draft report in June. 
So stay tuned. More is coming. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Chris. Any any final questions or comments? Okay, we appreciate the presentation very much. We look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you, Chris, Becky, Ashley, Patrick. <laughs> okay, do we have anything for the good of the order? All right, we don't have any other items on the agenda, so we'll go ahead and adjourn for the day. Everybody have a good rest of your Wednesday. <laughs>